All right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I should be back. Should be rocking this thing. Okay. Can you guys hear me? See me? Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Gee <laughs> Louise. Computer problems. Yeah. Come on, hamster. I have a little whip, but I'm like, whoosh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for patiently waiting, you guys. If you're still here, it's probably like two people still here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. All right. Well, I was able to save my project out, and, and uh, yeah, I had blue screen of death, and then my machine had to check the hard drive to make sure it wasn't corrupted and thankfully no corruption so we're good to go all right <laughs> oh wow all right so i think i'm gonna move into move i said move again uh, i'm gonna move into just start starting to warp this thing around okay so i'm gonna delete these eyes and let's see if we hit a this is what it's gonna look like if we hit a Okay, so let's go to, yeah, I'm gonna turn that on and then hit uh, make poly mesh 3D, which is, then I'm gonna switch over to that one. Okay, and this is the new, the new thing. And you'll see it's still in pieces and parts like this. Okay, but now what I can do is, um, actually it added subdivision levels, I think. Let me do that again. I must have had my adaptive skin uh, turned on to like two or something. Uh, volume's low. Here, let me turn it up. Is that better? How's that? Is that better? Good? We good? Much better? Okay. Might help if I turned up my microphone and actually spoke into the mic, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay, it's still acting super slow and chunky. I don't know why. Yeah, it's really, really acting weird. Let me check something. Sorry, one second. Okay, that's why. My hard drive's full. <laughs> That's not gonna, that's not very good. Hold on a second. I'm gonna be moving stuff off of here. Okay. Sorry, one second. Holy cow. All right, and go. Okay, so I mean, this may be a little chunky, but that's okay. I'm moving it off of there. So you guys, that's my, my I've been having issues with my hard drive being full and uh, ZBrush uses swap disk space. So if, you're, if your swap disk is set to a certain hard drive and you're out of that space, then your performance is gonna, gonna really get hurt by it. So I think that's what's happening here. So hopefully that gets fixed soon. All right, I'm just gonna go into the top view and just like literally scale this thing down. Now he's just kind of tall and skinny and move his head down. See, I can move all the parts and pieces now without them being rigged if I want because it's no longer hooked to the, uh, it's no longer hooked to the, where'd my, where'd my chat go? My chat crashed. I'm still seeing some chat, but hey, what's up, Dan? Uh, try that again. Come back, chat. Yes, we're back finally. Sorry about that little little mix up there. Okay, so. It's just kind of nice because now I have all these pieces and parts and I can just move them 
together if I want to. I can hide them and show them before we before we combine them together. Got some weird stuff going on. Whoops, going on in there. Oh, come on. There we go. I just wanted to uh, shape this a little better before I, I go combine everything. Uh, you know what? You could if you kept it kind of similar to what you had in the beginning. Um, but I've kind of gone so far away from where it was now that it probably wouldn't be good. It wouldn't do a good job. But you could, you know, theoretically, hypothetically, theoretically. Oops. So I turn on topological and now I can just move these, each of these separately. You gotta grab the one you want first. And these legs are so small. Squish that right down and I wanna make this wider. <laughs> Is that an operation in initialize keep polygroups? uh no so um no it's not um it's so you're talking about the zizu thing so let me go back to this this one turn off a so essentially ba what you want to do is go down to adaptive skin and there is a let's see where is it oh this dynamesh resolution right here so I, if you turn Dynamesh resolution down to zero, then it's not going to Dynamesh it when you hit A. So this is the preview, right? This is a preview. And see how it says density three? That means it's going to subdivide it three times. That's why I went and rebuilt the lower subdivision levels. So if you turn that density down to one, turn Dynamesh down to one, and then when you hit A, it's gonna look like this. Um, so, Basically, if you want to Dynamesh it, if you don't want to go through all this hassle, you can crank this Dynamesh resolution up. Then when you hit A, it's actually going to Dynamesh it together. It'll still keep the groups, but as you can see, it's just kind of, uh, it's kind of messy. So what you can do, oh man, my, my, mal my virus software was also scanning in the background. That might have been the reason because I rebooted, you know. Um, but essentially what I can do now is I can just, you know, start start working on this. Turn off spotlight projection. I can start smoothing all this stuff out, right, really quickly and just start working on it. Um, so that's that's kind of the beauty of this whole Zizu thing. Oh, thanks, Dan. So you can see my hand. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, let's go back to the other one. So basically, like what I said is I just turned Dynamesh down to zero. Then when you hit Adaptive Skin, it doesn't Dynamesh it. It just keeps them all in um, primitive pieces. And that's, you know, you guys know how I like to work. I like to work in primitives, right? So, um, hey, from Vietnam, how's it going? Uh, the the Relax Brush, are you talking about Smooth, Chris? Or what, what are you talking about, the Relax Brush? Like a specific Relax Brush, no but smooth where it's like the super smooth where you let go smooth and then it relaxes it, then yes, I use it all the time. <laughs> I don't know. The, the face on that cow kind of looks like he's gotten, he's gotten a bee stung in the butt or something. He's like, whoa. <laughs> he's got quite, a, quite the long face. Why the long face? mask this ear off grab the snake hook brush and actually warp this ear Oops. 
something like this. And I want his snout to be wider. See how, how much quicker, even though we, uh, we had that little, the, the little issue with me rebooting, it's still a very fast process to block out a, a character with this, with the Zizu stuff. It's pretty nice. Okay, and this, I'm gonna make his, his, uh, his rear super, I love how straight it is down to the leg. Is it possible to project details from two poly groups of the model A to B, which is just, yeah, you can, you can do that. You just, it, it will project anything that's visible. So I don't want those pieces, so I'm going to delete them. And do I want that one? I'm going to delete this one too. And this one. These are just the interior pieces that are making up because everything has to be linked, so um I'm just deleting the linked pieces that are internal that you don't you don't know that are in there unless you like hide and show stuff and that's just kind of the way things are built with the uh with with this way of building the model. So I'm going to kind of just leave this tail sticking out away from it because when I finally um uh, merge all this stuff together, I don't want the tail to merge into the body. So I'm going to stick it out a little bit. Okay, this is a little too stretched out there. Uh, do you have any tips for complete beginners with sculpting in ZBrush? Um, yeah, you can check out, so there's a Z Classroom that you can check out for beginners. Um, and then uh, Michael Pavlovich has some really good uh, starting ZBrush and I'm actually working on one I haven't really announced it yet but I'm working on a brand new um, kind of a beginners little uh, tutorial that that you can check out it's actually part of my bigger course right now but I'm I'm working on one that's smaller that's not part of the main course that I'm going to release into the wild soon hopefully trying to get it done <laughs> and if you have any specific questions on zbrush like how do i do this how do i do that you can also search for um, ask zbrush and joseph drust has made a whole bunch of videos that answer specific questions that you can do a search on okay Pull this forward. So I'm going to, I'm going to build his neck like this, but I'm probably going to separate it too. So I'm going to copy this, duplicate, and then hide everything except for that. Just because I want to make it become the collar later on. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to try. I'm going to make his horns and eyes separate, so I'm not going to add those yet. I'm going to try and um, merge this together, see what happens. But what I can do right now, if I want, well, I'm not. What, was it, what I was thinking of is I can Z remesh it at this point, but um, 
I don't know that I want to. I'd love to see more lessons on stylized anatomy. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And they're getting in there. <laughs> now that I have my new studio, um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to be adding some more shortly to the main course. Okay, so here we go. Hey, Southern Cross. Am I back? I'm back. I did crash. Yes, I blew, I had a blue screen of death issue. <laughs> okay, I'm going to duplicate this. And then we're going to try and merge it to see what happens here. Oh, I think I want to make that udder separate too. Split hidden. Okay. Back to this and delete these internal pieces. Can a specific part be projected using some brush? Um, not, not really. Basically what you do, I mean, there is projection brushes, but it gets a little complex because you have to use the morph brush and essentially you save a morph target and then you can, um, go in there and, and use that brush to bring back what was in the morph target. But the best way to project, if you're actually projecting is just to hide and show the pieces and parts that you want to project. Should you spread out the arms too? Um, you can, but for this guy, I'm gonna keep them kind of close and then I will, I'm gonna work on the seams in between, up and between there too, so. I'll get that figured out as we go. It is getting ready to snow here. Snow's coming. I can hear the wind howling outside. It's coming. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. So let's see. I do want to move these legs out a little bit. Now that you, now that I look at them. Let's just kind of go like, I just want to move them like this. Uh, you prefer to work on a display tablet instead of a non-display? I do. But that being said, I've, I've worked on a tablet for most of my career. Like on a, on a non-display tablet, just on a regular tablet. Okay. I just want to get the bottom of this body right. I just saw that it was off. I need to fix it. Oops. So you can look at the silhouette up here. You can see if it's it's matching or not. And then Maybe pull the head. I want to pull the head out away. There's so many internal things going on in here. Like this guy. Yeah, I just wanted to push that forward just a little bit to give him some neck. Yeah, for sure. Snow for Christmas is always fun, right? <laughs> Okay, I think, so if you look at the silhouette up there, I think we're, we're pretty close. Um, maybe I can pull out this, the nose a little bit more forward. And I'm gonna, I'll really work on this after I get it, everything combined, so. Uh, did you find the display tablet a leap ahead of a non-display? Um, not really. Not really. Uh, I, I talk about this during the stream quite a bit because the question comes up often. Um, you, 
the 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 pen display will make you faster it won't make you better um because there's a one-to-one -one connection so your strokes you're gonna have to do your strokes fewer like less times because you'll get it right the first time or at least the second time and with a tablet there's a disconnect so you might have to do that same stroke three or four times instead of one or two times and um just because it's a like i said it's a disconnect so you're not touching it directly but it, is it going to make you a better artist no you can do you can do what you need to just fine with a regular tablet just don't use a mouse to sculpt with i say that a lot too <laughs> Okay. Da -da -dun -da -dun. Okay. So I think let me adjust. Well, I'm probably gonna s just squish these things around, but uh, I'm probably gonna reduce those and get rid of them. Okay. So let's uh, now that I've moved all this stuff, I'm gonna duplicate it one more time. Okay, I have three cows, <laughs> and then we're gonna um, combine them together. I could dynamesh this together at this point. That's not a bad idea. Um, I could stitch it together at this point. Um, I could z-remesh it. I think I might dynamesh it at this point because there's so many pieces and parts in there that the stitching might, um, m you know, might have issues so i think i i'm just going to dynamesh at this point which i usually don't do but for this one i'm going to so let's try maybe 256 and i don't care about my groups um maybe a little higher let's try 512 okay that's a little better all right um, two thousand dollar difference in price between having a display versus tablet will help in making you decide. <laughs> That's true, Doug. That's totally true. And that's why I didn't have uh, honestly, I didn't have a display tablet for the longest time. Okay, now when I'm in Dynamesh, it doesn't smooth as quickly as I would like it to. So what I like to do is go into my light box and go grab a smooth, a, a stronger smooth brush. Smooth, smooth, where are you? There you go. Smooth, stronger, okay. That's what I want. So it'll smooth much faster. That's a little too fast on those legs. They're shrinking. Yeah, it's a personal preference thing and it's a, if you can afford it or not. It's it's crazy too with this, with me. Uh, I, I Like I said, I didn't use a Cintiq for the longest time because they're so dang expensive. And I actually started with a smaller one and then traded, you know, like sold it and then bought the next larger one the following year and then sold that one and i kind of kept as i could afford it i kept make getting a larger one until i got this 27 where and i'm not going to get the bigger one <laughs> that one's too big in my opinion it's just a vast a vast space where you're you have to actually turn your head to see the whole thing too big Okay. So at this point, um, now that everything's smooth, I, I am going to Z-remesh it because this is too dense for my liking. So, oh. yep, I, I think, let's see, oh gosh, my pen wants, wanted to roll underneath. 
Yeah, that, I, that's that was my first one was the 24 HD and I loved it. Yes, Z rematch to a lower resolution. This is this is too dense for me to make large movements. So I'll duplicate this again. And Z remesh it. I'll hide this one and Z remesh it. Let's try poly count five and see what happens. Da, 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 da. I need the um what is it called? The the music from the game show. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. And I'm gonna turn on, turn off Dynamesh, turn on Dynamic. There we go. Okay, now we can really start moving stuff around. Oops, now I better, I better turn my smoothing way down. <laughs> Kevin Dill. Yep, you're right. You have a whole whole herd. Yeah, Mortar, I, I, I run in, into that problem sometimes. I'm actually gonna take a take some liberty with this design right here and give him some hip bones. Push this down. Because cows have big protruding hip bones like that rather than a single hump in the back. <laughs> so Hello, uh, about your course, are you trying to help a student just, are you trying to help a student just for the one model to start to finish? How does that work? No, actually uh, it's it's lifetime access. So the course is lifetime access and um, that means you get to make as many characters as you want. It's the, the process is a journey. So I don't want it, I don't want people to have to stop at one character, right? make one then you make the next one and then you make the next one and then hopefully you're getting better and better each time you make one And I should probably I should probably announce that I'm going to be having an amazing Black Friday promotion that's that's coming up. So if you're not on my newsletter and you're interested in the course, I suggest getting on that newsletter. Um, and I sent out some emails announcing that it was coming. So if you're on there, you should have seen those emails. And and if you did see those emails, make sure you click into it. So you're, because I don't want to spam everybody with like the the promotion if they're not interested right now or they can't afford it right now, you know? I'm I, I'm not a huge fan of spamming. So um, if if you don't click on there, I'm not gonna send you the spam. The, I shouldn't say spam, the, the promotion. So if you want to hear about it and see about it, then hop on that uh, newsletter okay and you get on the newsletter by download downloading my brushes you don't have to necessarily download them to get on the newsletter but you think you need zbrush to comp compete with other top tier indie games or is blender okay 
Uh, I don't, I can't really answer that because I haven't really worked for an independent studio. Um, all of, you know, it depends on what studio you're, you're trying to get on and if they, what, what they use in their production pipeline. Because there are independent developers that do use ZBrush. Um, so it's completely up to the company that you're, that you're looking at. Uh, Chris, yeah, I'm going to announce it Wednesday. So soon, soon. And then, and I've been I've been debating this and toiling with it for a year now, but um, I am going to raise the price of the course after the first of the year or after the promotion is over because I've doubled the content since I launched two, two and a half years ago. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to increase the price because it's got a ton of, ton, a ton of content in there for the price. And I've thought about breaking it up, but it just doesn't make sense. Like, for example, I have a student-only live stream that I did every single Wednesday. Thir I just barely finished it up, and there's 34 episodes in there. Two, two, 34 two-hour episodes. So that's, what's that, 68 hours of content just in those live streams. Which is, and that wasn't there when I first launched two and a half years ago. <laughs> So that's just, that's just, yeah, Chris, um, I've, I have some, uh, some part-time staff helping me out. Yeah. And I'm also working on a brand new community that I'm, I'm paying. It's not cheap. It's actually built on the same framework that the Zebra Central is built on. So that should be coming within the next year, hopefully. So uh, Ubisoft just, they, they put money towards it. That doesn't mean they're necessarily using it in their pipelines. It depends on the, it, it depends on the studio if they're using it or not. But yes, that means they're interested in it. So just like they're interested in all, all different software, whatever, whatever going to help them make, make their games faster. I accidentally turned the Z intensity down on this. Okay, before I close this mouth all the way, I want to Z remesh one more time so I can get the flow going around the mouth right here better. Oh, thanks, Chris. Yeah, that was that was super cool. And that's only one that's only one example, one story, but that's that's probably been the most uh, rewarding part of this whole thing, because when I first made the course, I was just like, you know, I made it just to do on the side while I worked in the industry. But um, it turns out that a lot of people want to learn how to do this stuff, which is, which is great. So, um, and I didn't expect, like I expected a, a hundred students maybe. And two and a half years later, there's over a thousand students. And it's like, you know, students come and go, right? Um, as far as like their activity in there. So it's not like I have a thousand active students in there all the time and you know, they'll, they'll buy it and they're active for a while. Then they'll kind of go off and do their own thing and then come, you know, I'll do a student challenge and then they'll come back and do a couple models. And, um, Hey Daniel, that was uh, Corinne. There's actually two, but Corinne is the one. Okay. So yeah, Disney Imagineering down in Florida. Hey, what's up, Jace? Um, well, I can't, I don't want to say on, on this, um, on, you know, cause I don't, I don't know exactly when people are going to watch this in the future and I don't want people to quote me on it. Well, you said in this video, that's this much. So, um, it's going to be, it's not going to be a hundred dollars. <laughs> It'll be more than that. 
So Chris, no, they don't, they do not. That I not as long as as long as I know, or, or as far as I know, they don't. Depends on the department and the you know where you're working. So I. And I, I priced it based off of uh, Pixelogic's business model, which is kind of lifetime access. I loved that business model myself, you know, because um, I like not paying extra for things I've already paid before. So um, it's, uh, yeah, I've, I've added so much content since I first launched it. And I'm adding more and more. And I'm, I'm reorganizing it. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a constant moving Thing. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna duplicate. Here we go, another one, so we can get a herd, another cow. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I'm gonna make this even even more so z remesher likes to follow the peaks and the valleys of your model so it kind of helps to give it a peak to follow like around the corner of the mouth right here and then going around um why am i duplicating because it's it's kind of a uh, a fail safe so i can always go back um there is history you know there's the zbrush history up here but um, I always just like, it's kind of like a, uh, you know, like a save game. Like when you're playing a video game and you save it so you can always go back in case you screw it up. That's exactly why I duplicate. So it's kind of a save game. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> All right, that's a little better, a little better. It's still not doing what I want it to do. Let me try it one more time. Each time you Z remesh, it does kind of, you there, that's better. It kind of loses some volume, so you have to bring that back. It's just something to be aware of. But this is, this is much better, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Now I can close his mouth. Close your mouth. Kids that sit in the back are the troublemakers, Doug. <laughs> yeah, but it's still, um, even when you inflate, it still is losing. Like if you had something that was creased, it still loses that crease. So even if you inflate it, I'd rather just do it, kind of do it by hand, you know, just come back after the fact and do that stuff. Uh, Z guidelines, I sometimes I use them, but most of the time I just tend to get a better result by creating my own peaks and valleys for the geometry to follow. And it works out pretty well. Okay. And as far as his nostrils go, I should have been doing his nostrils at the same time, but I didn't. Oh, well. Okay. I could do something like this. And then do... Let's see, where are you? Edge loop mass border. Edge loop mass border. That'll put a edge loop around what you have masked, and then you can come in here and say extrude polygroup all, and then push it in.
Yeah, the eye sockets too. You can do it the same way if you wanted to. And these nostrils are much closer together, so I gotta drag them over here. And shape this better. Okay. And I could Z remesh that. Um, I could do some Sculptors Pro if I wanted to. There's so many options in ZBrush, that's why I love it. It's like, well, how do I want to make this? So yeah, it's kind of since I did it this way, it's kind of given me some uh some bad topology. Uh, might be a stupid question, but what are the pros of sculpting like this over regular Dino Topo? Um, there's, it's, it's preference. Honestly, it's just personal preference. But for me, I like keeping my mesh super duper clean and dynamic topology will instantly make your mesh, uh, like choppy, a little bit choppy. So it's not so smooth. Warble free. Um, I, I mean, I just made a warble this way, but that's why I was saying I probably should have made the nostrils while I was doing the mouth so I could have the Z remeshed mesh go around the nostrils. So, and that will keep, keep it clean, but that's okay. Um, let's do an eyeball eyeballs. <laughs> These eyeballs are funny. Moo. Whoop, come on. I hate it when the when it just so happens that little orange dot is right underneath the move portion of the gizmo. So then it just makes the, the gizmo pop over there. And so it's like I can't grab it, so I'm gonna have to grab it with the mouse and move it in. <laughs> it's like get back here. It's like chasing a like the, the penguins chasing the light or whatever. <laughs> That's what I feel like. All right, split the unmasked points and go back to <laughs> Yep, Z remesh mesh. Like uh, I always say <laughs> when, I, uh, when I'm talking about that in my course, that's what I, I actually pull up a, a uh, uh, Dr. Seuss, like the Bee Watch Watcher. If you ever you guys know that book, the Bee Watch Watcher. It sounds a lot like that. So I'm going to push this in. And I want to straighten up his face. Straighten your face. And I'm going to put the horns in there too. And then of course his collar. So his neck comes way closer down here. And comes back up. Remember to look at your sculpt from all angles to get it to work right. Um, what's the heart? So, uh, Chuck McGee, um, the what's the harm in it is it's going to get rid of the the. Uh, the flow that I have going around the lips right now. Here, I'll just show you. So see, I have this really nice flow around the lips. Sometimes when you um, have the Z remesh done and then you push it closed, it will reorient the, or, the direction of the flow of, of things. And then even if it fixes the nostril, it'll break the mouth. So I would have to go and open the mouth back up to get it to work. It might still work. 
see that so now the this is going off in this direction instead of around the mouth as before it's going nicely around the mouth and the reason why I care about that is just because um, the it'll cause warbles it'll cause just like it did here so let me um, I'll just open the mouth a little bit and that's that'll fix it that'll make it not go off in a weird direction yeah <laughs> It should anyway if I pull this out let me get underneath here and just make sure that it's I give it a direction to flow around yeah no worries Chuck that's my dad's name <laughs> it's my middle name well Charles okay and then while we're here we can kind of push this in and push this up and smooth it make a better mouth cavity okay <laughs> like he's like <laughs> okay let's see uh let's see how it does now uh yeah, see, it's got this little star right here. That's not good. Uh, but the nostril's looking good. So, you know what? I think I'm just going to live with that that little star. That's okay. Because it gave us a better nostril. But before I do that, we might as well do our eye too, right? While we're here. While we're here. Let's do edge loop mass border. And... Bring that eye in. And so that's basically, it's going to create a peak and a valley at the same time. So leaving it like this should give us some nice um, edge loops to go around. So let's try it. Yeah, not bad. Uh, yeah, but as soon, as soon as, and I, I've talked about this before, as soon as you go into Sculptress Pro, you've got to kind of commit to that workflow, right? And the, the, actually the new, um, the new mini course that I'm putting together, I talk about dynamic topology. That's, that's the workflow that I teach in that one. I'm, this is kind of the Z remesher workflow. And there's nothing wrong with either one of them. And you, yes, you could go and fix that little area. Not that big a deal. I know, Neil. <laughs> totally, totally true. Okay, I'm going to give it just a little bit more of a peak right here. And right here. And see if I can get the Z remesher to flow even better around this. It's kind of a creepy cow now. How now, brown cow? You guys remember that? That's how I'm. I'm that old. Okay, and then I'll do one here too, just to see if I can get it to wrap around those lips. Do it again, Sam. Boom. All right. Much better. So every time you do that, though, every time you do a Z remesher. These legs are shrinking more and more. It's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, yes, guy, you totally could. That's a thing, too. You can make it its own, by making it its own polygroup, you can force it to go around where you want. Um, I don't know why I'm just a big peaks and valleys. That's the way I like to guide, you know, work my, work my flow. Oh, come on. Why aren't you doing the thing? Let's try it from down here. Uh, doesn't want to do it. Okay, I'm just going to do it by hand. Whoops, I need to be in uh, mask lasso mode. And something like that. 
let's uh well the other way blur my mask and then close his mouth back up beautiful there we go yeah chuck yeah and i <laughs> I kind of use this platform, honestly, this uh, streaming platform with Pixelogic. Since it's a Pixelogic channel, I like to demonstrate all the different workflows that you can possibly do, you know? And they're not necessarily the best or the worst or what, you know, exactly what you should do. They're just an option to give you to say, oh yeah, in this instance, maybe I should use uh, Dino Topology or Maybe I should use ZRemesh. Maybe I should use DynaMesh. Uh, Rylan, absolutely. If I was making this in, for a, a film or a game, I would definitely retopologize by hand. Never, I would never use the ZRemesher. It's just, the only time I would use a ZRemesher for an, an actual in-game thing is if it was uh, a static thing, not going to be rigged because the rigging department, they would hate you. <laughs> if, if you gave them a Z-Remesh mesh, they're gonna be like, what is this? So yeah, <laughs> not a big deal, but it's a good question. You know, one of these days, hopefully it'll get there, right? We, we're all dreaming, we all want it. Nobody likes to manually retopologize. Well, there's always that one weirdo <laughs> like me. I don't mind it. <laughs> but most people, it's not their favorite thing. Why do I have to do this part? Yeah, Jace, that's that's exactly. It's like therapeutic, right? Just put on some headphones and just kind of zone out, get her done. Uh, yeah, you can totally do that, Peter. Yep, you can. That's something that happens quite often. And you can cuz that's that's the beauty of polygroups. You can just use them to select different things. So I could totally like mask off the bottom of the mouth and just turn it into a polygroup. Then it makes it easier to select. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's well, I'm just saying, uh, that not a lot of people enjoy doing it. Right. Not a lot of people enjoy like redrawing your model on the surface of your other model. You know, it's just kind of a, a pain in the butt to do, but necessary. Let's see. But I myself, I don't, I don't mind it at all. I sometimes have a problem with Z remesher where it won't Z remesh as low as I like to. So, um, oh no, I'm saying I'm, I'm one of those weirdos. That's why I said it, Sumerian. I'm one of them. I'm, I'm one of the people who like to do it. That's why I called it. That's why I said weirdos. I'm one of them. Let me close this up. How's it going, Sumerian? I haven't seen you for a while. We're all a little weird. Yep, we're we're sculptors. We're all a little weird. <laughs> all right. Let's turn those eyes back on. Turn your eyes on. There you go.
some in some in more ways than others <laughs> like me i'm weird in too many ways you're like why are you so weird i'm i'm one of those geeks that like all the geek things you know i kind of think it comes with the uh comes with the territory right the artist territory the gamer territory Working on my second piece in the Games Workshop program. Oh, nice. It is a 3D artist thing. Well, you know, I like I like D&D. I like sci-fi and fantasy. I like puppets. <laughs> you know, all those screwy things. Muppets, puppets. Dark Crystal. Lord of the Rings, Mandalorian, all those things. Okay, his eyes are definitely bulging. I need to bring him back. Bring him on back. There we go. Because from this three-quarter, it was cutting into the silhouette, and I definitely don't want it to do that. <laughs> Damn. And then, I, then there's... Then there's some weird things that I like to get into, like riding a unicycle <laughs> and playing a harmonica and juggling. That kind of weird stuff. Model trains. That's kind of fun. I want to get one of those, uh, I'd like to get one of those one wheels. You guys seen those one wheels? It's like an electric unicycle. <laughs> yeah, model trains, it's kind of like doing sculpting live in a, in a way, right? You know what's crazy too? Oh, thanks, Jace. Yeah, he's, he's witnessed me ride, ride my unicycle. I have one with a big fat tire. I used to have a tall one too, like a like a five footer, but I sold it because I it was too dangerous. I didn't <laughs> I'd just die if I crashed, so I sold it. Okay, my ear. Let's see. Oh, you saw me ride the tall one? I can't remember that. That's hilarious. I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah, that's the next dream. Should have been in the circus. Why am I sculpting? Missed opportunity. Okay, I gotta raise these ears up. Jace, that's funny. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, guy, that's it. That's the thing. You figured me out. <laughs> and I, I, I nerd out too, like playing Magic the Gathering. I played that with Jace a lot. I like that a lot. I haven't played in a long time though. But now that I've moved to this new place, there's a game there's a game shop just down the street from here. Yep, total magic geeks. MTG. I'm one of those nerds that hangs out in the break rooms, <laughs> lunch and plays with all the other nerds. I admit it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, huge D and D nerd. Yep, I have a I play every month with a group from the game studio that I used to work at, actually Avalanche Disney. And we we have we counted, uh, we've been playing it for seven years, that same campaign for seven years. 
Uh, any chance you might email the Black Friday sale before Wednesday? Probably not. Um, it's I'm working. I've hired a, a a marketing helper, and he's helping me out with that. And we have the whole thing planned out. You play Commander? Um, I I not really, but I've I want to. Like I said, we used we used to just do drafts at lunch from our own cards. We just kind of like get them together and do drafts. Indeed, no, it's that thing was it went for two over two hours, so it's really really big. Um, so I'm still I'm still uploading it and editing it and stuff. So yeah, as soon as it's up, I'll let you know for sure. So what he's talking about is uh the last episode of the student only live stream that i just did it was yesterday and i had a special guest friend of mine that's also another pixelogic live streamer it's uh brendan bankston and if you haven't watched brendan live you you should if you're interested in realistic characters um the last episode was all about taking a character that i made and bringing it into substance painter and texturing it Okay, this is really weird. And uh, we did we did that last night or yesterday for for two and like just over two hours for the students and it went really well. I think I don't know. Are you guys you those of you that were able to watch it yesterday? Did you guys check it out? Did you like it? Okay, I want to get some eyebrows on him. How are we looking on time? You enjoyed it? Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I haven't heard back from too many people to see what if they liked it or not. I, I liked it myself because, you know, I don't know too much about Painter. But it was it was super fun. Awesome. Next time you talk to Brendan, just say bacon and watch the Doug Rage came out. <laughs> uh, my streaming schedule, well, it just ended, but it was, it was every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, which is now, well, it's 1.30 here right now. And I, I usually stream uh, for two hours. So it's just like this, but I I can I talk more about other programs as well, not just not just uh, ZBrush because it's not the Pixelogic channel. So um, we talk about other things as well, and then on Fridays I do a Q and A session for all of the um, students as well. So will I make any discount on my workshop? Yes. So there's one coming for the for the Black Friday special. So just be on my newsletter, watch watch it, keep your eye out. For the info in that newsletter, it's coming. Okay, let's see. I'm actually going to polygroup this nose. What? Streams very informative. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Ahmed. <laughs> you meant on Pixelogic? What do you? Let's see. Did I miss your question? Oh, what's my streaming schedule like on Pixelogic? Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so it's every Monday at from uh from let's see eleven p eleven a.m. until one p.m. on Pacific Standard Time. And if you want to see schedules of, of, of me and other streamers, you can go to uh, ZBrush Live. So I'll pull this open really quick. So just go, just type into Google ZBrush Live. And then you'll go to this first link right here. And you can actually watch the streaming here. So you'll see me pop up, hi. 
And you can go to schedule on the top left. And here are, here are the schedules of everyone. So Thomas Whittleback goes tonight. Um, and you can see when everybody is uh, streaming. So you can also check out the other presenters and what they're all about. If you click on presenters, like here, here's me and here's uh, Ashley A cubed, Michael Pavlovich. Um, and here's Brennan right here, Brennan Bankston. He's the guy who helped me out last night. And uh, these guys are all really amazing, great people to watch. So if you're into learning ZBrush, um, definitely check these guys out. Yeah, hope that helps out. And I'm doing a triple stream tomorrow. Ch -ch -ch triple stream. <laughs> so what does that mean? That means I'm going to be streaming with two other streamers, Anna and Pablo. Is it Pablo? It's not Oscar, is it? It's Pablo. Anyway, there's three of us um, sculpting tomorrow. And this is my first time, so that's why I, I couldn't remember who is who it is actually with but it'll be at 6 p.m. tomorrow mountain time for me. And I don't know that it's been announced yet on the schedule. Um, I didn't look to see, but basically one of us will stream to Twitch, one will stream to uh, Facebook, and one will stream to YouTube all at the same time for, I think we're going for three hours. That's a that's usually one hour longer than I, <laughs> I typically go. So uh, yeah, Mike, Mike is fantastic. He's really, really good. And uh, speaking of Mike, so I do um, pro interviews too um, for my for my students. There, it's just part of the course in there. And I interviewed Mike, and uh, I like to have the the artist do a bit of training for the students. And he did a really, really good one on how to light in Keyshot. It was super cool. So yeah, I love Mike, and I love his art. He's really cool. Check that out. Triple screens. <laughs> there you go. Triple screens for triple stream. Yeah, Mike, Mike Tom. Is it Thompson or Thomas? Yeah, Thompson, right? I gotta I gotta go back and look. I suck with the names. I do, I do, I do. Thompson. I think it's Thompson. I call him Mike T. <laughs> so here we go. So where is he? Right there, Mike Thompson. So here's his uh, past broadcast and schedule. Yeah, look at this. He is absolutely incredible. So go check out his his stuff. Thanks, Kim. Yep. All right. So I'm just kind of going through here. I'm going to make a, a collar, but instead of drawing the collar on with a topology brush, let me use a, just an in, insert mesh cylinder. Sometimes I like to cheat that way. What are you looking at? I'm looking at a cylinder. <laughs> Shrink this down and get rid of the caps. Let's see, I'm gonna do group by normals. Whoops, that gets rid of uh, these groups. So before I do that, I'm gonna split it off. Now I'll do group by normals. And what that does is that will put groups anywhere past 90 degrees, like that. And then, hey, what's up, Warren? Then you can hide the ones you don't want. Whoop. Delete hidden. Now you just have this, and I can go to double, so we can take a look at it. I did, but I changed my mind. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do this, because it'll be easier, because there's fewer points. It's okay to change your mind midstream. The whole idea is to get her done. So, I yeah, I saved that off just as a... A, a precaution like maybe I'll want to use that later but I decided not to to not to I can mask off this one side and then roll it like this kind of thin to thick it's a shortcut keys for hiding meshes 
Um, you hold down control plus shift and then tap on the surface of the object. Okay, and now I want this to kind of go from thin to thick. Kind of like that. Uh, oh, Shannon Thomas. Yeah, guy, he actually, he, oh, oh goodness. Someone's trying to call me. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, so Shannon is uh, the cinematic lead at Blizzard for characters. And uh, yeah, he's already agreed to an interview. I just need to set it up. <laughs> so, yep, hiding is also based on polygroups for sure. Okay, so now that we have this, let's make sure. So now I want to edit the neck to match the collar because I like that collar shape. I can just push this in. Or layers, I'm not a huge fan of layers to be honest in, in ZBrush because just they just because they don't get they don't work well with a lot of things. Uh, yeah, they are. I've thought about doing, you know, pulling them out and putting them on YouTube or something, but um, that's, that's how I can get them to talk about stuff that they might not talk about if it was public. Um, like I had Tyler Bulliard on there. Um, and he was talking about Frozen and, you know, his, his, his work on that. And if it was public, he couldn't show that stuff. Because Disney would go, no. <laughs> am I using a keyboard for all my shortcuts? I am. Yeah, so uh, you can't really see it too well let me see yeah so i have my cintiq right here and right underneath my cintiq i have a keyboard and it's on a on a shelf that i row that i roll in and out underneath it so i have my left hand on my keyboard um and then my right hand up on the cintiq okay so i should probably save this it's a good idea right I have Mitch, Mitch Squirrel, now I have Mitch Cow. Gotta love the, gotta love the Mitch, Mitch concepts. His stuff just kinda, just fits. Same with, uh, if I wanna do a longer project, like more detailed and a, and a crazier uh, uh, cow, then, um, then I, uh, then I, I, I like to use uh, Johannes Helgeson he just does fantastic stuff but if i want to do really quick live stream type stuff uh mitch mitch does just fantastic work for that let's get these horns in oh you've known him guy that's cool yeah he's a super nice guy if if I wasn't doing the if if I wasn't doing the workshop and the workshop wasn't doing as well as it is doing, then I would love to work with Shannon and and his team at at Blizzard. Love it, love it. That's probably where if I could move to Irvine and work for Blizzard, that's probably where either that or the Overwatch team with Renault. So great, great people, great work. Yeah. Yep. The goal is for Mitch too. Like I keep, I keep sculpting. I hope you guys don't get tired of it, but I keep sculpting Mitch's work because I like it so much. Uh, no standing. If I stand up the Cintiq for me, I get fatigue. My, my arms get really fatigued. My best, uh, the best way I like to do it is, um, I like to put the Cintiq down on my lap. And I like to have the buttons up on the side like I did with my um, 24HD, had buttons up here. Um, 
and I could I could hide my keyboard completely and then just work that way with it down on my lap and I could sit upright instead of right now I'm kind of leaning over it's not the best position for me um, that's the for me that's the best way that I like to work but um, this is the closest closest I can get to that with this this specific Cintiq so okay so let's see what the last points okay gotta adjust those horns a little bit you guys like Mitch stuff <laughs> okay cool uh, no, it's not on an arm. It's on the, uh, it's just on the base. The expensive base. Base. <laughs> Turn up the base. Yeah, you know what? It weighs so much that my desk is bowing. It's because I have a I have a standing desk that moves up and down so I can stand up um, because it's just sitting this amount of time is bad on your back. So um, the it's the top of it is made of MDF and it's actually sagging because of the weight. It's pretty crazy. But I'm going to I'm getting a new top built that's not MDF. MDF sounds like a band. MDF, like a rap rap band, something. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do the uh, do the brows. All right, brows. <laughs> yeah, the new food additive. I don't like it. <laughs> Let's put down mass points. Uh, uncrease all to make them soft. There we go. And then I will be. Um, Let's do split unmass points. Oh, it's is it already? I already did it. <laughs> okay. It looks like a worried cow. What are you worried about? Slaughtered? Food? Whoa. I keep forgetting I'm on Smooth Stronger, and Smooth Stronger is, even at very, very low Z intensity, is it's fast. Um, Patrick, that was the topology tool. So right here, topology. Um, basically what it allows you to do is, um, Come on, select. Okay, is you can do grab a surface like this and you can draw some topology on top of it. And then wherever you cross your lines and make a square, it's gonna make a quad like that. I don't know why this last line's not working. But you can make a quad like that. And then when you're done, you just click on the surface and how, however, however large your brush is, it's gonna make the object that thick. So if I had the brush this thick and I tapped on the surface, it makes it very thick. Okay, so that's essentially how that, that brush works. But anything with um, that's kind of thin, I'll use that, that topology brush with it. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Very fun. Okay, I want to inflate these eyebrows in the middle. Whoops, not the forehead. The eyebrows, come on. Come on. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, the size of your brush affects the size of the dashes. So smaller is easier and it crosses correctly. That's totally true. Thanks for bringing that up. So um, basically what he's saying is if you have a really large brush and you go to draw the lines, the tick marks, see the orange and black tick marks, they're going to be farther away from each other. But if you have a really small brush, you draw a line, all those little tick marks are closer together. And when you draw a line across this way, see how it pops to the where 
the in between the black and the orange. That's that's why it popped up here and made the little green circle because it looks for the crosses. Um, that's how it connects everything. So if you're trying to cross in the middle, it's going to pop it up there like that. So it's just easier to have a smaller brush. That way it has a better chance of hitting in between uh, those black and orange ticks. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I could have done that with this collar instead of using a, a cylinder, but I just wanted to make sure it's like clean and symmetrical and nice that way. Okay. So let's see. Let's for the hooves. I actually want to insert a multi mesh down here, another cylinder. So let's do that. Whoop. And again, well, let me make, I'm going to make one, I'll make these hooves and then I'll duplicate them and move them back there. Uh, let's see. Hey, how's it going? Access from Cameroon. How's it going? Thanks for hanging out. Let's scale this down, move it forward. Shrink it up. Maybe scale it. Oh, auto save. Thank you, auto save. Okay. I don't want these edges this sharp. It's like super sharp hooves. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to clear the creasing, but what I, when I do that, it's going to look like crap so, because dyna dynamic subdivisions are turned on. So what I want to do is go in here and add some support loops with the Z modeler brush. I'm just going to put one right there and one down here. And let's do one in the middle just for fun. Now if I hit D, that's a little better and a little softer. Not so sharp, kind of sharp, but not as sharp. <laughs> Why you gotta be so sharp? And then let's adjust this to kind of uh, wrap around that hoof. Make it look like it's actually part of it. There we go. Moo hoof. And for this, if you ever want to duplicate an object, essentially all you have to do, as long as you don't have subdivision levels, all you have to do is uh, make sure you have the gizmo showing, hold down control and drag on the move and it will move it over, move. And I feel like his legs are still too long. I want to shorten those up. So I'm going to bring this up and then I'll adjust this leg in a moment. And for if you want to move a large appendage, you can actually use the, uh, the move elastic brush because it kind of has a bigger fall off. See how, how far up the leg it's actually moving things. This works really well for like hair and the capes or things like that move elastic just kind of really spongy a spongy move brush hey how's it going you're welcome Turn this up a little bit. Thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. Another wonderful Monday. And I see these angles that Mitch is getting in his design. I really want to have these hard angles. Because they're funny. 
Cow's legs don't do that, but this cow does, and it's great. Starting to get too flat. Let's inflate it. There we go. All right, let's grab the inside and kind of do the same thing. I just want the the angles as they change to really be apparent. Same with this butt back here. Really kind of sharp and square. Exaggerate that. Then with this tail, I I am your fun. <laughs> Download all of my videos and try and be a zebrush artist. Awesome. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I forget. I need to make, <laughs> I usually have a little box on my background that tells me to stay out of there. <laughs> All right, you taking off, Jace? Thanks so much, man. Yeah, I'm almost done here for the day. I'm gonna wrap it up soon. Okay. This is the snake hook brush, so I can pull off little hairs like this. If I have enough geometry to do so, I can kind of do stuff like that. It means you have to focus on work. Yeah, no. <laughs> Happy Turkey Day. Yeah. Okay. Just want to pull this back and up a little bit. Just kind of looking at these shapes. I kind of want this one to go in like this. And push this one in just to, because I messed it up with the collar. And this head is a bit too bulbous for me, for my liking. And just keeping with the shape language, I want to square this head up. Wear it. Then I can kind of pull out. So, you know, cows kind of have that, that, uh, the, the, ra the raised area around their horns. So I don't know if I have enough topology. I might just to kind of run it around like this. And notice I'm using, even though I, it says cloth, this cloth brush. I don't always use it for cloth. It's not like you can only use this brush for cloth. It's essentially like a fatter detail brush. Okay, and then let's see what kind of... Uh, I need. I have this hair right here. I might actually just put a clump of hair on the top of his head that has a higher density that I can then pull pull hairs out of. I'll do that. Yeah, I might go a little bit over since I crashed. <laughs> Even though I got to move on and I got stuff I got to do today, but. Let me split this off and okay. I'm going to subdivide it once. Just giving it some more topology like this so then I can just turn off uh, turn off mirror. And then pull some hairs out. Maybe 
one more right back here. Um, you don't have these these brushes. Just go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I give them away for free. So right up up there. Whoops. Wait. Let's see. Up there. <laughs> go follow that. There you go. Neil just posted that. So you can go grab the brushes right there. I give them away for free. And this user interface for free. You can go grab those. Okay, I'm gonna hit the Z remesher on this guy. Maybe a three. That's probably a little too high. Let's go one. There we go, that's better. kind of uh, make it a little interesting here with the hairs. I think that'll work. Okay. Now I just want to throw some quick colors on him really quick. Quick colors really quick. All right, let's go grab these. White, first of all. Grab his body and fill it. Apply this and then subdivide it up so it can take the color. It might be too high. We'll see. Then grab his horns, do the same thing. Well, I don't have to do that. Let's see. Grab this color here. Fill the horns and then grab the gray and then fill. Where'd my hair go? Come back here. And his eyebrows. And let's see. I hid the udder. I didn't get the udder done. It's, it's here. So it is what it is. <laughs> I need to I need to adjust the shape and give it these little nubbies that are pretty cool. Let's see. Fill in these hooves. Still need to adjust these legs up front here to match. And then let's see the eyes. Okay, and then grab this pink again. This is what I was going to use the poly group for is to fill this with that pink and it makes it kind of easy. <laughs> uh, Mark, it's still, it's still the 2019. I haven't really updated anything for the 2020 yet. Um, I'm still looking to see what I want to, um, oh yeah, got to have the cowbell. <laughs> But I, I, I'm still digging into ZBrush to see what I want to put on the user interface, but 2019 will work exactly the same. Uh, so not really that, that big of a difference. Um, you just kind of put it in the correct folders for 2020 and it works. Okay. I thought I filled this, but I didn't. Okay, let's see. And I can grab this color and just kind of put some really quick pupils on those eyes. <laughs> Mer. I need to reshape these nostrils a little bit. 
pull them down. Yeah, catch up. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff that's off because I I did this in two hours. So I need to uh, I really need to fine tune this whole thing. That is for sure. And I usually do that offline. I don't do that while I'm streaming because it just takes too much concentration to go back and forth and back and forth and make it exactly match the concept. What am I doing? Okay. I want to pull that part forward, but this part back. Oh. Pull that too far back. I really want this straight. Yeah, color is huge. Yeah. And like like this head right here, it's not the collar is thicker. There's a lot of stuff I gotta do. <laughs> Thank you very much though. Thank you. I appreciate I, I appreciate the uh the feedback for sure. Okay, I just want to put some spots on him. So when I do spots, usually, or you know, something like this, usually I'll start with with symmetry, and then I will finish with asymmetry where it gets closer to the center. Let's see. Okay. Also, I can project it down onto there too. Oh, thanks, Neil. Yeah, <laughs> especially with a crash in the middle, right? My my screen blue, my computer blue screened right in the beginning, and so I had to come back. <laughs> okay, let's see. So here's a little trick. This one, let's see. Um, this is my alternate color, which I want to be this. Okay, so essentially, while I'm painting like this, I can hold down Alt and it will select this, this the other color. So that's why there's two color swatches there. So it makes it really fast to go back and forth. Like if I'm painting like this, and see how this has a warble here? I can hold down Alt and just kind of erase that. So something like this. <laughs> yeah, I really, I need to sync so the biggest thing I'm seeing that I need to do right now is kind of push down his head and kind of sink it into his body more. That's the biggest thing I'm noticing. Um, I need to fix fix the leg shape right here where it connects. Um, yeah, and then get those eyes a little a little better, a little kind of forward front front facing. That's what I'm trying to say. And if you guys want to see how to project, I'll show you that really fast before we go. I'll just wrap it up here. Um, yeah, more cowbell. Got to get that cowbell in there eventually. Okay, so what I can do is for this thing, I need to turn on spotlight projection. I say turn it off when you're just using this image as a reference. But if you ever want to paint the... Uh, paint it down. Yeah, see the, the head? I, well, it's not turned properly, but... Okay, then I can also turn the opacity down so I can actually see through it a little bit. 
Um, but I'm looking at this spot right here that I want to project down onto the surface. So I'm uh, just going to get this into place like this. Then using hard paint, I can just paint through this image and grab that, that shape. Just put, put it right on there, just transfer it on there. So if I hide it, now I have that shape on there. Then I can come back in and it, it's kind of hazy around the edges, which is okay. So it makes it look different than these. So you, you kind of want to use that technique. Um, the, you know, either one or the other, not both. Something like that. Okay, so I am, yeah, I'm just gonna finish this up right here. And we'll, I'll, I'll have to finish getting that cowbell on there, uh, not live. <laughs> so let's see, let me turn that camera down. Let's go 85. Okay, so here we go. Yay, moo cow. I apologize, Sandro. I don't understand. I gotta fix. There's a lot of things I need to fix on this. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for being patient. And thanks for waiting through while I... Uh, made it through my crash. So <laughs> that was fun. Okay. I'm going to save this and then I'll wrap this up. I, I think it'd be fun to put a cow up in, in place of this guy's head right here. Wouldn't that be fun? So the, the cow is telling you the direction of the scene. <laughs> All right. Take care everybody. Uh, and thank you so much for hanging out. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you're here from in the U S um, Oh yeah. It needs a black eye. Oh my goodness. Okay. Goodness, I'll do that really fast, really fast. Oh, thank you. I got to do that. Give me it. I got to turn this off. There we go. All right. <laughs> and um, like I said, I'm having a Black Friday sale on my 3D character workshop. So if you've been waiting and, you know, waiting for a good price or, you know, you're just wanting to get in there, it's going to be the lowest price it's ever been and the lowest price it will ever be. Uh, after that, it's going up in price at the beginning of the year. So it's going to be the best time to grab it right now. Um, well, it starts on Wednesday. So if you're interested, get on my newsletter by signing up for my three brush free brushes. Okay. So thanks, Charlie. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week. And on, on, I was going to say, I'm, I'm doing a triple stream tomorrow night. So if you guys want to hang out with us tomorrow night, it's going to start at 5 p.m. Pacific time. There's going to be myself, Anna, and uh, Pedro. Or did I say Pedro? I think so. <laughs> anyway, three of us streaming live tomorrow night. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to pass animal skulls to each other. So... All right, take care and have a wonderful day. Cheers.